So we've been working with arcs and central angles and inscribed angles. So I wanted to spend another day working with that. So let's start with an opener. I'm giving you this picture, it looks pretty crowded, and I'm telling you the measure of angle ACB is 72 degrees. I'd like you to find the measure of arc AB, the measure of angle ADB, and the measure of angle BEA. So with circle problems, a lot of times you're going to see a lot of angles, a lot of segments, chords, uh, radii, and it can get pretty confusing. So if possible, or when possible, it's nice to put things in different colors. So I've done that here for you, and I've marked the 72 degree angle. So let's start off with, if you know the central angle is 72 degrees, then you know the arc that that angle goes to, so I'm going to draw that in blue as well, that arc has the same measure, so that's 72 degrees as well. Okay, now we want to find the measure of angle ADB. That's the red angle, so we're looking for this angle here. Now the vertex, point D, is on the circle, and so that's called an inscribed angle, and we learned last time that an inscribed angle is half of the arc. So if this arc from A to B is 72 degrees, then angle ADB will be half of 72. And half of 72 is 36 degrees. Finally, we want the measure of angle BEA, and that's the green angle right here. And also notice that that's an inscribed angle because vertex E is on the circle. And so if you look, all of these angles go to the same arc, AB. And since it's an inscribed angle, we know that angle E is going to be half of the arc that it goes to. So it's also half of 72, which makes it 36 degrees as well. So when you see pictures with inscribed angles, if the endpoints of their angles, in this case, point A and point B, are for both angles, that means that the angles are going to have the same measure because they both go to the same arc. Alright, a few other examples before you start practicing some more of the inscribed and central angles. So in this example, I'd like you to find the measure of arc AB. Now, arc AB is here, and that's a little different from some of the ones we've done before, because right now we know angle BAC is 35 degrees. And by the way, on special note, I want you to note that segment AC is a diameter, because it goes through the center of the circle. Okay, so what can we figure out? Well, if we know that the inscribed angle BAC is 35, then we know what the arc is from B to C. The angle is half the arc. So if I double the angle, that'll give me the measure of the arc, which is 70 degrees. Now that's still not what we're looking for. We're looking for the red arc from A to B. But notice what I had said before, that AC is a diameter. Well, if AC is a diameter, then that tells me that the arc from A through B to C is a semicircle, which is 180 degrees. And since B to C is 70, if I subtract that from 180, that leaves me arc AB is 110 degrees. So sometimes we have to do a few extra steps to figure out what they're asking for. Let's try another one. Find the measure of angle M. Now this just depends on if you remember what we had talked about last time. What do we have? We have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. And we learned that in, when that's true, the opposite angles are supplementary. So angle M is opposite angle E. And so I know that they automatically will always add up to 180 degrees. So all I have to do is subtract 118 from 180, and that gives me 62 degrees for angle M. 
I don't know what angle O and G are, and I won't be able to figure those out, but I do know together those add up to 180 as well, which makes 360 for the whole circle. Okay, let's look at one last example. I want to find the measure of angle I. Angle I is right here. Now, what are the important things you notice? Well, hopefully you notice that EI is a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle. What does that tell me? That tells me that the arc from E through P to I is a semicircle or 180 degrees, so I could use that if I like. I also have the measure of angle E is 32 degrees, and that's an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle. So that means that I know the arc from the endpoints of that angle is going to be twice the angle. The angle is half the arc, the arc is twice the angle. So I can figure out that P to I is 64 degrees. And then since E to I is a semicircle, which is 180, then 180 minus 64 gives me 116 degrees for arc EP. So together those add up to 180. And now arc EP, let's go to red, arc EP is the endpoints of angle PIE. And so this is an inscribed angle at I, and so it's half the measure of the arc. So half of 116 is 58. Okay, hopefully you didn't write any of that down, because that's the hard way to do it. So let me erase all this work, and instead of always just trying to do something from what you remember the last time, let's think a little differently for a minute. Since we know, I erased the center of my circle, since we know that EI is a diameter, that tells me that the arc from E this way to I is 180 degrees, and that means that angle P has to be a right angle, because half of 180 is 90, and angle P is an inscribed angle. So once you realize that any kind of a picture like this always gives you a right triangle, now that I know one of the angle, one of the acute angles is 32, I can subtract that from 90 to get the other angle, which is 90 minus 32 is 58. And I didn't have to do all that other work with the arcs. So sometimes as the problems get a little more complicated, there might be more than one way to do it. So look for the easiest way to do it. All right, so now you can go on to worksheet three and let me know if you have any questions.